I call the uh, Tuesday, June 22nd, 2021, Brockton School Committee to order. We have established a quorum on Zoom tonight is uh, Ward 2 School Committee member Cynthia Rivas Mendez. Uh, we will now stand and salute our American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty, justice for all. We do want to thank BCA again for always uh, uh, helping us with recording. Uh, this is great tonight. We're in the George uh, Rom Little Theater. We actually have a lot of people here tonight, and that hasn't been in a long time. So we're joined by Superintendent of Schools, Mike Thomas. Uh, we, on agenda item number two, hearing of visitors, there are none. Uh, we will now move on to uh, consent agenda, which we have subsection A, B, C. Any school committee members have any questions or take any of those out of order? Motion to approve items A, B, and C. Second. Motion on the floor was properly seconded to take A, B, and C collectively. A is the approval of June 8, 2021, regular school committee meeting minutes. B is the acceptance of notification of personnel appointments, non-certified personnel. And C is the acceptance of notification of personnel actions. Leaves of absences, resignations, and retirements. There is uh, a motion on the floor properly second. All in favor? All opposed? That motion carries. Consent agenda is hereby passed. We will now go on to agenda three, which is the report of the superintendent of schools, Mike Thomas. Mike. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We uh, have some recognitions. First, we have um, for Dr. Linda Cahill, our nursing supervisor. Um, uh, Linda is on Zoom with us tonight, um, but I wanted to spend some time recognizing Linda and thanking her for what she did, um, not only for the Brockton Public Schools during the pandemic, but what she did for the entire city. As you know, she served as the acting uh, director of the Board of Health uh, when asked by the mayor and we were able to come to an agreement with uh, Kim Gibson at the BEA to allow her to do that and serve in that role. Um, when we were closed down uh, last March, I think it was into, I wanna say, um, June, in May, June, when she took over that, and then she did that through the summer and, and worked all the way through and then came back on the school side and what she did, um, not only serve in the city, what she did uh, serve in the community and, and just what she did with her nurses and recognizing all her nurses for the contact tracing when we came back to school, uh, making sure everybody stayed safe, um, looking over our students and staff. So um, it's, you know, it's important for us to recognize Linda and what she did. It was a lot on one person, um, and she did a great job working closely after she returned to us as a supervisor of nurses, doing that job and still helping uh, the Board of Health and the Brockton Hood Neighborhood Health Center with the vaccine clinics. Um, she was a major part of that. And then the vaccine clinics that came out to the schools, the one here at Brockton High, and then the ones that are um, at our middle schools and at the Key Center as well. Um, her work was amazing, so we just wanted to thank her and recognize her. Yeah, if I could just kind of follow up on what the superintendent said. Linda uh, is just an awesome professional, um, and her and her team here on the school side save lives, quite honestly. That's what happened. They saved lives. Uh, we collaborated with the Board of Health. Uh, when John McGarry left, um, we asked if Linda would join us, and she did without question. She didn't hesitate, um, and that's what it means to be a dedicated professional. So she's become a great friend. Uh, we are on regular Zooms, Zoom, 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 that's the new normal. Um, but, you know, on the weekends when we're still doing every Saturday, the Board of, Board of Health is doing it to Shaw Center. It's not just Board of Health nurses, school nurses, and Linda is there all the time as well. So I applaud you uh, for what you've done, Linda, and we truly, truly thank you as a city and as a community. Thank you. And Linda, when I see you, I have a nice certificate from, um, from the school committee and the mayor, so... Uh, and myself, so we'll make sure that she's with us, correct? So, Linda, the floor Thank you, is everyone. Yours. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you, everyone. I, I much appreciate it. Um, can you hear me? Yes. I couldn't do it without the school nurses. They're just wonderful. They just jumped in and helped with the contact tracing and the clinics. And also, I'm appreciative of the Board of Health. They've been wonderful with Dr. Montessor and the nurses. And also Dr. Herman has been wonderful helping guiding us with the data um, on a daily basis. Um, it's been truly a community effort in getting our numbers down and also getting our citizens vaccinated. Um, thank you very much.
Next, um, I want to welcome um, John McDonald, uh, Guidance Counsel of the Plouffe Academy. We also have our Principal of the Plouffe Academy, Principal Michelle Nezzarella is with us. Uh, and I'm going to turn it over to John because we want to recognize the, the Galactic Girls, and everybody saw the article about them in the newspaper. We're so proud of these amazing students, um, and I'm not going to do it enough justice. I want John, who spent all this time um, with them and at the Plouffe School, and it's just uh, the story is amazing, so I'll let John go over the whole thing for us, and then we want to recognize them. Thank you, Mr. Thomas and the school committee, Mayor. Uh, nice to see you again, Mr. Minicello. Both of uh, Mr. Minicello's uh, sons attended Pluff Academy. So back in February, Kathy Ledger, who was the director of guidance here at the high school, had sent out an email to all of the guidance counselors about an opportunity. It was a contest that was being um, driven through American Student Assistance. And I approached my principal and I said, listen, this is something that I... I want to try. Is it something that we could do? We were remote. Uh, Ms. Nazarella, as all of you know, are super supportive of the students, super supportive of the staff. So she's like, yes, run with it, go, whatever you need. So I picked a specific group of kids. And at the Pluff, we have the two-way Spanish program. And they're great kids. They're hard workers. And I said, you know what? I'm going to pick this one class. And we're going to divide them into groups and they're going to enter this contest. And for, I can tell you from day one, each group was completely bought in. They were like, all right, let's do this. And matter of fact, one of the groups actually interviewed Mayor Sullivan. And uh, unfortunately, that group didn't place, but <laughs> we appreciate your... Uh, no, 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 we appreciate your uh, input. Uh, so our group, you know, it's hard because we started remote, and eventually we got to the point where, um, you know, they got to really think about what they were going to really do. And we had the opportunity to interview the former, um, you know, director of NASA's flight mission. This, this gentleman, his name is Todd May, you could actually Google him, and he's in charge of basically training all the astronauts. Um, and it was a wonderful opportunity. Um, he was amazed by how much our students knew, all the questions that they were asking. So I'd like to introduce our team. They are called the Galactic Girls. And to going left to right, we have Isabella Renaud. Come on down. We have Genesis Ponce. We have Abby Menzueta. And we have Eliana Cabellan. Gabby Rodriguez is our fifth member, but she unfortunately is in California. Um, she's uh, traveling with family. So the unbelievable thing is that this contest spanned 13 different states, 23 different schools. There was almost 100 and I think 98 entries, and they beat everybody. And it awarded Pluff $10,000 in funding, and they're actually going to be on the committee for next year. They're going to be going into eighth grade uh, to determine how to spend that money. And they also um, won $300 themselves. So they, um, and this is the first time that American Student Assistance has done this. So it's, it, it, they made a really big deal out of it. It's been in all the, I mean, I, if you, you could go into msn.com, it's there. It's been in all the papers. Um, it's really cool. So I'd like to introduce our two captains, Eliana and Isabel. They come on up and say something. And their families are here as well. Hello, I'm Eliana. I'm Isabella. And we wanted to thank you for inviting us to come and um, letting us come. And um, we want to thank all of our teachers um, that really inspired us um, to work as hard as we did. And I remember um, sort of at the beginning of the school year, our science teacher, Miss Duquette, who's seventh grade, eighth, uh, no, seventh grade science teacher at Plouffe. And our first lesson was about Mars. And it really, really interested us, which is why we chose um, building a colony on Mars, because we wanted to further our, our research and we wanted to learn even more. And I think that's like what 
inspired us um, to work so hard and to do what we did in our project. We did two models, uh, one Mars Death Simulation, and um, Isabella drew blueprints of our hydroponics, which was our main idea. Um, Um, so, yeah, <laughs> um, but again, thank you for inviting us. Awesome. If I, if I could just for a second, so I, I have a, a student um, child that's a student at the Plouffe, and I drop my daughter off every morning, and um, every kid that goes to a Brockton Public School is a special kid, but I, I do want to just thank the principal, Ms. Nazarella, because she's out there every single day. I see her sweeping the parking lot, so thank you, thank you. But again, we, we call the City of Champions, and, and you and your team, Galactic Girls, are definitely champions in our city. So thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and we can pause a few minutes if, um, if anybody needs to leave. Um, Why don't we take a two-minute recess? Yeah, we can take a recess. Unless you want to stay for the exciting events that are, t are yet to come. <laughs> Superintendent of the Schools, um, Mike uh, Floor is yours. Next up, we have Dr. Ethan Cancellas with us, uh, Christina Gallant, and uh, Mr. Kevin DuPont, uh, who, is, uh, who are working very hard on the development of our single district virtual school. Um, as you know, we put an application into the Department of Education. Uh, they did respond to Mr. D'Agostino of some um, tweaks and updates we had to do. Ethan and a task force have been working. Um, on tweaking um, our application uh, from the feedback we got from the Department of Education. Again, this would be, um, just to be clear, uh, next year um, there is no remote learning option. There is no hybrid option. So uh, parents need to, you know, students need to be back in school full five days a week. Uh, there's no remoting into the classroom. There's no uh, live teaching from the classroom. Uh, that's over. Um, so a student, a parent that wants to stay fully remote will have to enter into a virtual school, and we're trying to have that as a Brockton public school option. Uh, so Dr. Cancel and his team have been working on this, and the feedback, I believe, came late last week from the Department of Ed, um, and they've been working on tweaking our application, and we do need a vote. Just the, this the vote, the vote that you'll take tonight is to basically allow us to submit the application. Again, it does not mean that the Department of Ed will approve it. It's just that we're approved in putting the application in. All right, well, 
Good evening, everyone. I'm very excited to introduce uh, the real uh, driving force behind this uh, application, which is they, they call it a single district virtual school, which basically means it's only for Brockton. So this allegedly is going to work, except <laughs> that it doesn't. Hmm. I can step in there. <laughs> Uh -huh. There we go. So it started with the superintendent's vision, and basically Mike was pretty straightforward about it. He said he wants there to be a, an option, a choice for parents, for those students who it works better to have a full remote option, that they can have a full remote option in Brockton with Brockton Public School curriculum, Brockton Public School teachers, and the opportunity, and this is, I think, what differentiates this um, school from other options out there that are external to our district, um, they would be able to participate in all of the activities of the Brockton Public Schools. So that's, that's an interesting wrinkle. But I do want to talk about, um, you know, Christina Gallant and Kevin DuPont when Mike asked me to head this up, I was smart enough to know that um, in the super compressed time frame that we had, I needed a really, really strong team to help out. And I couldn't think of two better people. I put a job ad out there and they both applied for it. And I'm going to have um, <clears throat> them do the bulk of the presentation tonight because honestly, um, they are the driving force behind this along with a really strong steering committee, but you'll hear more about that. So we'll go to the next slide and Kevin, you can take it away. Thank you everybody for having us here tonight. I'll quickly go over um, kind of our, our process and, um, and where exactly uh, uh, we are in that process. Uh, so like Ethan said, uh, I might had a vision about having this virtual school. I'm not sure if you heard of germs uh, James R. Ray, what's his name? Uh, from from Field of Dreams saying, if you build it, they will come. And so that's kind of how it's worked out. So uh, there's a couple uh, there's, there's a couple pieces here that we'll quickly uh, go over. The first thing was, we need to see if there was interest out there. So as you know, there's around 4,000 students that, that remained fully uh, remote up until, you know, a June or so. It was probably around 2,500 uh, households. Uh, so around the end of April, we surveyed that group and wanted to know how many of those households will still be interested in a possible uh, remote option in uh, September. And now keep in mind, a lot has changed from April uh, to now uh, with the state and, and vaccines and even us all here together. Um, and so we did that piece in April, all right? And then last week, so we, and so last week, we also did an additional survey to see out of those 400 people, out of those 400 households or so, how many of those were still interested in, in September. And so we had a good number. So that's the first group that we targeted. However, that's not the only group that was left, all right? There's a couple other um, groups uh, that we also wanted to target. Uh, another one that, uh, that we're reaching out to is also our homeschooled students. Uh, students that are being homeschooled by their parents or or uh, a neighbor or, or some other uh, person. So we're focusing on reaching out to them to see if this is an option for them as well. Uh, there's also students uh, here in the Brock Public Schools that actually attend state virtual schools in Greenfield and there's one in Walpole that our students are, are attending. And then this also is reaching out to any, and like Ethan said, any student for the Brockton, uh, for the Brockton Public Schools. Things change uh, between now in September. And so this will be an option, for, like Mike said, for somebody who possibly has a medical condition or there's a family issue, that, uh, that they would have this virtual option. And so that's why the interest is there and that's why we've moved on to this piece, right? Uh, the next piece of why we're doing this is we really wanna strike why the iron is hot. Over the past year, uh, we and you here in the committee, uh, we, uh, you supported uh, the technology behind our remote learning. You, we, we got computers in every student's hand, multiple computers sometimes in every student's hand, uh, within a sh within a short a short time frame. And then we also have now students that have been using the computer uh, to engage a classroom, to engage their colleagues, or um, 
uh, teachers engaging colleagues, students engaging students, all use the computers. So they have that knowledge base. So we want to continue that on. And so that's an important piece is that prior to this, if you would have came to me two years ago, I might have said, maybe we don't have the infrastructure in place to support this. Now we do. So we have this opportunity. And the last piece comes down uh, to revenue. Anytime a student leaves, of leaves our district or goes to either homeschool or goes to a school choice or goes somewhere else, uh, they're taking revenue out, out of our district. So we want to keep revenue inside our district. So now that we had the interest, now we have to start building it. All right? And so like Ethan said, this application was first submitted um, in May. We got some feedback in June. And so for the past couple weeks, uh, probably, and probably two weeks, we have actually already started this work. And so Christina Gallant will talk about the work uh, that we've done and why we're here uh, to ask uh, for your support so we can continue on this work and send this forward to the state. So I thank you all for your support. I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you, and thank you again for having us. So we, uh, to make sure that this school is ready to open and run successfully in September, we put together a steering committee of 15 stakeholders. These stakeholders represent K-12 educators, teachers, administrators. Uh, we're working with the Director of Special Education, Lori Mason. We're working with the Director of Bilingual Education, Kelly Jones, and the Chief Officer of Student Support Services, Sharon Wolder. In addition, we are working with the BEA, and specifically the president of the BEA, Kim Gibson, and members of our instructional technology team. This team, the steering committee, has been working on five focus areas, making sure, again, that we are ready to up and run, to be up and running successfully in September, focusing on our mission and educational program, access and equity, our school culture and family engagement, our capacity and planning for success, and accountability and compliance. The next steps that the steering committee will take involve developing the schedule, policies and procedures in a student handbook, and next week we will have an information session for families. Uh, it will be a virtual information session, June 28th, that's Monday at 5.30 p.m. So just to take a quick look at the timeline, what we've been working with, it has been a very quick turnaround. Uh, we submitted the application to the Department of Ed on May 6th, and like you mentioned, DESE came back and provided feedback to us on June 4th. The steering committee is working on responding to that feedback, um, and tonight, of course, you have the school committee vote. We have a deadline of July 6th to submit evidence of the school committee vote um, and the school committee approval and the final proposal on July 6th. Uh, there is information here, just this is a postcard that went out. This went out to our families who are homeschooling so that they can join us on Monday. Of course, the school being open to all students who are Brockton residents, anyone can join the session. So Monday evening, 5.30 uh, at bpsma.org, we will have that information session for parents and families that have more questions. So if there are questions, we will take them. Any questions by any of the school committee members? Uh, Ms. Minicello, please. Hi, thank you for the presentation. Um, we've noted as a committee that it's great to have options for our families here in Brockton. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, this is, this is gonna be wonderful for you know, some families who, this you know fits their 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 need um, so in terms of so let's say that, that I, I had a student who you know for some reason where, where we need we think we need a remote type of a situation mm -hmm. um, and l let's say my student is um, in the ninth grade so could you just tell me like walk me through like how this would look or, or how many instructors teachers would be involved so 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 i guess take me through a ninth grader coming in and you identify them as this is a person that this um program would fit right so um like we said this is a program that's open to all brockton residents um so it will be a k-12 program staffing will be based on enrollment uh, but we are working on in year one a fully synchronous model 
but our goal is to work towards a more flexible option where there will be some option for asynchronous work built into that schedule so that students who have jobs, um, students who participate in various activities have the flexibility built into their schedule. So we are um, kind of using our remote learning experience as a jumping off point, but then building to improve that over time. So let's let's say I'm I'm one of the galactic girls and I end up on Mars and my in my uh, space um, house and I want to be part of the Brockton Public Schools so that if we had the technology that that student up there could basically be absolutely involved. if yeah. they have internet connection and actually that is a part of the school is the district will be required to provide internet access free of charge to all of our students. I'm glad that we're on the cutting edge. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any additional questions? Mr. Sullivan, please. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to make sure the K-12 would be Chapter 70 funded. Is that, is that right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Um, Mrs. You. Sullivan, followed by the Vice Chairman. Hi, yes. I was just wondering, um, how do 45 students go virtual on other school districts? Because I didn't even know that. There are, there are two Commonwealth virtual schools. Um, so there is Greenfield and Tekka. So these are statewide. They're not local virtual schools, but they are statewide virtual schools. And anybody can sign up? Mm -hmm. no. I believe so, yeah. 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 Wow. And this was made uh, years ago. The state came in after Greenfield made theirs. And I can make this. Uh, the state came in and then added uh, some additional uh, requirements needed. And so they actually came up with that with this district model after the state model was was developed. Wow, I didn't, I didn't even know about that, but great job. I think it's a great idea, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, Mr. D'Agostino, please. Um, well, most importantly, I wanna thank all of you for the work you did on this, and it was a quick turnaround, and you all worked very hard to make it happen, and I, I appreciate that. Um, I had the easy part just signing off on things that were going to DESE uh, after reviewing, of course, but. Um, you guys did, you know, a lot of great work and, and, and quickly turned it around, so thank you. Um, but and also along the lines of just the whole thing, I mean, I think, you know, we've seen that there is a need and a desire um, for this type of learning. Now we, we have the ability to do it, which we didn't before. Um, so I think this just makes sense to, to go forward and have yet another uh, offering. I mean, we have so many offerings in the Brockton Public Schools now. I think this, this makes sense and fits right in with you know, the robust offerings that we, that we have. So uh, great work and thank you. Yeah, that, thank that's you. a really important point. Um, the superintendent stressed that we would have choice for parents. And one thing that I neglected to add was, Mike also wanted to make sure that there was a space, a physical space, so the teachers would be going there. So, you know, we learned that it's a lot easier to have, you know, tech support and, and just, oversight and supervision if they're on site. So there is a building that you know Mike has um, graciously given to us. And so this is gonna be different. So in fact, if there is a, a kid in Brockton who let's say their house is, you know, just busy or, you know, just difficult to work in, they could actually arrange to show up at this site, have high speed internet connection. So it's just most most people want remote want remote but we these are the advantages that we have over greenfield or you know um walpole so i forgot about that yeah. just to get a point of information it's the old rockland trust near wait funeral home up on north main uh, reminder i mean i mean you don't have to remind this committee but you were the ones that supported this long before a pandemic uh, that's <laughs> the reason we have that building and um, we lease it because that was our vision for a virtual school <laughs> and this was almost a full year before the pandemic i think it was the summer of um it summer was the summer of 18 or 19 or, no, I, I think it was summer yeah, of 19 19 the summer but of 19 so it'll be two yeah two years ago it seems never, like it's the summer of 2001 but yeah. that's how long ago it seems but uh, little it was did we know <laughs> we'd make the whole district virtual <laughs> <laughs> so yeah having that building is again the foresight of the committee. Um, that was our goal way back. 
Any additional questions? Uh, Cynthia, I, I know you're on Zoom. Any, any questions or Tony? No? Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate what you're doing. So, um, Dr. Cancel, we just need a motion to approve us, approve the application, or just approval of the virtual school? Motion to approve the virtual school. Yep, just like that. Perfect. This motion second. on the floor by Ms. Manichello. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Sullivan. Uh, we don't have to read a roll anymore. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, next, we have the approval of the supplemental um, in-service calendar, um, enclosure number seven. Um, these are the in-service days, um, or the half days, um, that uh, June Saber McGuire and her team have looked over and over and over and over again. Um, so these are the recommended dates for the um, in-service days. It also has the family school conferences um, for all levels for the fall and the spring. Um, and obviously it has our um, graduation. Um, what we have to do is we have to update this and make sure we include um, this, Melinda will have to, this is draft, so we'll have to update it to include the Keith, the Huntington, and the Edison. But this is the supplemental calendar, which is always at the, it's on the back of the district calendar every year. So Any questions relative to this? Oh, Mrs. Sullivan, please. Uh, yes, I just had a question on the um, release time and service is professional development days. Correct. Those are All used those. for that. Absolutely. All the all the only days. one that is an early release. To, I don't think it's listed on here anyway. There is an early release on Good Friday. Yes. Um, that is not for PD. That's just um, everyone gets out at the early release time. Okay. Thank you. Any additional questions? Uh, Ms. D'Agostino, please. So I just want to be sure any motion to approve this would also have to have in it, I would assume, the caveat that Keith Huntington and Edson get added. For the, the graduation, great for days. graduation. Yep. Okay. We'll right. make sure that that's in there before it's final. It's a state of motion. All right. Motion to approve the Brockton Public Schools 2021-2022 supplemental calendar, as presented, subject to the following um, change to the way it's presented. So I shouldn't say as presented. Subject to the following changes to the draft that is presented, and that be that the uh, graduations for uh, the Keith Center. Um, Huntington and Edson Academies be added on. Second, is there a second? Second. Motion was made by Mr. Agostino, it was probably second by Mr. Sullivan. Any questions on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? All opposed, motion carries. And then next is the approval of the district calendar uh, in wording um, as um, it would be the motion that was made tonight, you would be voting on to approve that from the policy subcommittee. Uh, Mr. D'Agostino, please. Um, I'll just do a quick report of the policy subcommittee. We met this evening, um, and uh, after some discussion, um, there was a, a motion made by the mayor, seconded by Mr. By Mr. Sullivan. I, I yes, think yes, like yes, them. and and unanimously approved um, with the following changes to the calendar as presented: um, that it be updated to include all federal holidays. Um, that the, I believe the November, the, okay, that the November um, recess actually be changed back to the Thanksgiving um, recess. Uh, winter recess, as stated on the presented calendar, be changed to holiday recess. Um, and um, we also, um, approved for the cult new cultural calendar to be um, distributed with this calendar when it when it's distributed. So that was the the motion and the favorable recommendation from the policy subcommittee. You entertain a motion on that? Motion to approve That's the recommendation there, of the yeah. subcommittee. Second. Second. Motion was made uh, by Mr. Agostino, was second by Mrs. Sullivan. Uh, any questions on that? Seeing none, all in favor? All opposed, that motion carries. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. That is the end of the report of the superintendent of schools. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Uh, do we have any items to refer to subcommittee this evening? I don't believe we do. 
We'll move on. Unfinished business, which is agenda four. Any unfinished business? Mr. D'Agostino. I just wanted to real quick remind everybody who has not yet turned in the superintendent evaluations that uh, we need that in ASAP um, so that I can move forward with um, compiling that and we can get the proper evaluation done. Um, I'm going to, I'm trying very hard not to have to do any committees of the whole during the, during the summer, but unfortunately this one we'll, we'll have to do. Um, so just please get that in ASAP. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Anything else about that? Oh, Mrs. Sullivan, please. Um, we just have to review on policy manual section L. So, that would have to yeah, go back to that's it. unfinished. Yeah. We didn't get to L tonight. That's right. We have to go back. Okay. Okay. So we'll reschedule, we'll send a policy manual. Yep. Thank you. I forgot about that, Judy. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Melinda will work with Mrs. Sullivan to schedule that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan, please. One quick question to the vice chair. The uh, diversity equity meeting, is that going to be rescheduled? Oh, the uh, diversity training. Yes. yes. Yep. Um, that will be rescheduled. We don't have a date yet, um, but that will be at some point over the summer. There was just too many scheduling conflicts to try to get it done in June. Okay. Uh, but we will get that done and get that completed. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Um, any other unfinished business? Seeing none, we'll move on. Agenda five is new business. Uh, approval of uh, proposed revisions to various provisions. I can of school committee give a little report on that. I uh, can give a little report on that. Please do, Mr. Sullivan. Tonight, the policy manual um, committee met, and we went over sections um, C and D. C is general school administration, and D is finance. And we recognize the changes, and the subcommittee voted to accept the changes on sections C and D. And section L, we didn't get to because of time. So we will do that follow up for that. So I don't know if we need a vote for the whole committee. Yes. Okay, so I make a motion to accept section C and D for the school committee policy manual. So motion on the floor, is there a second on that? Second. So motion made by Mrs. Sullivan. It's properly seconded by Mr. Sullivan. Any questions on the, uh, on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, raise your hand, it carries. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, agenda six, executive session. We do not have any executive session tonight. Seven is adjournment. Who wants to make that motion? That's motion to adjourn. Motion. motion made by Mr. Sullivan. Who's seconded it? Mr. Rodriguez, did you second that? <laughs> <laughs> motion was made by Mr. Sullivan, seconded by Mr. Rodriguez. All in favor of adjourning? All opposed? It carries. Thank you. Uh, drive careful. Have a good night.